Hi, Genius Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a science fiction drama film called Another Earth. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Group of dots. The movie begins with a high school party. Rita Williams, a 17 years old girl is a highly intelligent student who has just gotten into MIT. She celebrates with her boyfriend. In the background, she narrates that she fell in love with space science after seeing Jupiter's rapid succession in one of NASA's voyage pictures. Rita feels like she can do anything in the world. Late at night, she drives intoxicated, while listening to the radio which says that a new planet with its own moon, identical to the Earth, has appeared in the solar system. Scientists are baffled by the planet as no one saw it coming. The radio asks the viewers to look to the north to see the planet which is clearly visible from the Earth. An intoxicated Rita looks outside the window of her car as she drives it at high speed. Somewhere near, a family of three is in a car parked beside the road. The kid names his robot, Bob, and the parents laugh with him. As they talk, we get to know that the mother is pregnant. Their conversation is cut short when Rita's car hits them, causing a terrible accident. She is injured but conscious. She steps out of her car and goes to the other car to see the couple. Unconscious. Not knowing what to do, she turns around and is horrified when she sees the little boy lying lifelessly on the ground. Police siren wails in the distance and the screen goes black, showing us the newly found planet in the distance. A clip of Rita in a cell is shown. She has been arrested after the event. It is now four years later, a news report tells. As that Earth 2 is now way closer to the Earth and seems to be an exact replica of the Earth by its appearance, it is now easily visible from Earth's surface. The structure of its continents and ocean, even its cities and towns, as seen from the telescope seems to be identical to the Earth's. Scientists have tried sending radio signals to the planet and receive the signal back. However, they have not been able to decipher it. Some scientists don't even believe that. The planet exists, and believe it to be a cosmic mirror that is reflecting the image of the Earth itself. After four years of the accident, Rida gets out of prison. She goes out for the first time and her parents come to pick her up. While talking about the second planet, her brother mentions an essay contest sponsored by millionaire entrepreneur, Keith Harding, who is funding the very first space flight to Earth 2. He is granting a free ticket to the civilian who has the best motivation to join. Rita comes back home and looks at her belongings in her room. She doesn't feel like the person she used to be and doesn't like the room anymore. She looks outside the window and is fascinated to see the second Earth in the sky. Rita then gets on her laptop and learns about the United Sape Ventures, the program that her brother talked about earlier. To win the civilian ticket, she has to write an essay about the reason for wanting to go there and submit it. She stares at the laptop, but doesn't type anything. Then, she takes all her necessary belongings to the house's attic and declares at her new room. She sleeps on a mattress and pastes a picture of the night sky on the wall for decoration. The following day, Rita goes to an employment office to look for a job. Being an ex-convict, she cannot go to MIT anymore and any other colleges won't take her. The lady at the office offers her a job according to her qualifications. But Rita insists on getting a job that doesn't require her to talk to anyone. She gets a job as a janitor at her old high school. She starts working as a janitor the next day and doesn't seem to hate her job. It has been exactly four years since the accident. Rida goes to the intersection where the fatal incident took place and looks around. Just then, a car stops nearby and a man comes out of it. Rida remembers the guy being the man she saw. Inside the other car, she is surprised because she thought she had killed them all. The man keeps a robot toy in the pole nearby in the memory of his son and drives away. Rida quickly rushes home and looks up the case on her laptop. It turns out the man's name is John Burrows. Both his wife and son died in the car accident, but he had gone into a coma. A few years later, he woke up and has been living alone ever since. Upon further research, she figures that he has dropped out of his Yale music faculty position. She writes down his address and goes to meet him the next day. Not knowing what to do, she looks at him drinking in his messy living room, through the window. The night is snowy and cold, ridden by her guilt and seeing John in such a state. Rita is distressed. She walks on the snow slowly undressing. In the end, she lies down, shivering and naked. Her fingers become blue from hypothermia and she looks at Earth too as she lies in the cold. 
the screen goes black. In the following scene, she lies on a hospital bed. Someone had found her and saved her from the cold. Her fingers are injured but she doesn't have any fatal injuries. When she gets back home, she finally writes an essay to apply for the ticket to visit Earth 2. In the essay, she mentions that madmen, outcasts, orphans have been subjects to all the new experiments in the past, and not the nobles of the society. Hence, being a felon, she believes that she is the most likely candidate for this kind of experiment. Feeling great after submitting her essay, she goes to a grocery to get candies where she meets her high school boyfriend, whom she was partying with that night. He tells her he has gotten into business school, and introduces her to his girlfriend. He acts strange and awkward, when Rita tells him that she works as a janitor. Feeling embarrassed by where life has brought her, she walks out of the store without the candies. Rita knows that she won't feel satisfied until she has apologized to John, so she goes to his house again. She knocks on the door but the nervousness gets the best of her. Instead of telling him, she is the one who killed his family. She lies and pretends to be a maid sent by the maid and haven cleaning services for a free trial. John, who has been living in the place without cleaning it for months, accepts the offer and lets her clean the house. Rita is too deep into the lie, so she just goes with it. She starts cleaning, and John notices her investigating a telescope lying in one of the rooms. When she finishes, John, unknown to her identity, invites her next week to clean the house again. The week passes and Rita practices telling John the truth. However, when she knocks on his door, she is taken by nervousness again. So, she cleans his house again and doesn't say anything. She begins going to his place every week. However, John hardly ever talks to her. One night, Rhoda and her family watch a live broadcast of a scientist trying to communicate with someone on Earth too. She successfully receives a signal of someone talking, and it turns out that the person talking on the other end is the scientist herself from the other planet. She is her exact copy in every aspect, same name, date, and location of birth. Even the occupation and childhood memories match. The whole world watches in awe. Now everyone believes that Earth 2 is a mirror planet with the same people. The news baffles Rhoda, and she comes out of her house to look at the planet and its moon. The news has created a huge debate of what might be true and what is a lie. Physicists theorize that Earth 2 is a mirror planet, an exact copy of our Earth, including all of its people. Some believe that we could meet and talk with our exact copy, a person who may be identical but has led a different life. John and Rita share a common interest in space science. He offers Rita to use his telescope and she agrees. The two then play video games and seem to be developing some kind of relationship with each other. John offers Rita a ride home. Days go by and John and Rita get closer. One day, they arrive on the subject of the first expedition that plans to go to Earth 2. Rita tells him about the essay she has submitted, but John is skeptical about the expedition. He insists mankind is not ready to accept the realization that they are no longer unique, since they still believe that they are the center of the universe. John suddenly gets agitated when he learns that Rhoda has washed a sweater that belongs to his wife. He angrily asks her to leave. A radio program that broadcasts a debate warns about the potential dangers of Earth 2. Some people believe that since the people on Earth 2 have similar access to us in weapons and are of suspicious nature, there is a high probability of a war occurring between the planets. Rita comes home to John's car parked by her home. He is there to apologize for his behavior earlier and she forgives him. Then, he insists she comes with him somewhere. He takes her to a university auditorium and gives her a private concert of a new piece of music. Using a saw, the two feel a greater connection to each other after the performance. They go back to John's home. One thing leads to another and they end up having sex. Later, John tells her about the accident and his years-long coma. But Rita still doesn't tell him that truth. When she returns home, Rita's brother tells her that people from the space flight have called. She calls them back and is surprised when the millionaire Keith Harding picks up the phone. He tells her that she has won the essay competition and has been selected to voyage to Earth 2. Rita is over the moon and goes to John about the achievement. John praises her at first, but then asks her not to go, since they are in a good relationship now. He sees a future with Rita which scares her. She now knows that she cannot lie to him for long. She finally tells him that she was the one who caused the accident that night. John is speechless. He simply sits onto the sofa and asks her to get out of his house. 
When she comes back home, she is bombarded by news reporters standing in front of her house. The news about her getting the lucky ticket has spread around, and now people are digging up her past and broadcasting the accident. Luckily, her father comes to the rescue and brings her inside. She receives a ticket for her flight to Earth 2 from the United Space Ventures. A few days later, Ruda hears a scientist's theory in a telecast. He says that the people of Earth 2 had the same mirrored life as that of our Earth until it became visible to our planet. Four years ago, after that event, people's life changed slightly, changing their course of action. And perhaps their future. Ruda now believes that her mirror self on the other planet might not have caused the accident. She rushes to John's house with the flight ticket but he doesn't open the door for her. However, Ruda is determined, so she sneaks into his house through the window. When he sees her, John cannot control his hatred and starts to choke her. The two struggle for a while until he frees her. She gets up and tells him about the theory she has heard. She claims that the accident might have never happened and his family could still be alive. Ruda leaves the ticket for him saying that he could find his wife and son on Earth too. Sometime later, Ruda has returned to her normal life. After her apology to John, her mental health is much better. The space shuttle is about to take off when Ruda sees John. In an interview, as it turns out he has accepted her offer and is going to Earth too. Four months after the first shuttle took off, Ruda is walking home from work when she is stunned to see herself from Earth 2 in front of her. The movie ends as the two identical Ruda stare at each other. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.